Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, IPDI, for this opportunity. I'll be presenting a case of uh, persistent left superior vena cava draining into the right atrium via coronary sinus. Our case was a 72-year-old gentleman who presented with a history of dizziness. At presentation, his heart rate was 36 per beats per minute, and it was regular. He did not have any history of presyncope or syncope. His electrocardiogram uh, uh, showed bradycardia with a heart rate of 38 beats per minute, which was regular with ectopic atrial rhythm. His echocardi echocardiography showed dilated coronary sinus with otherwise normal uh, function of uh, right ventricle, right atria. Uh, and we suspected uh, it could be a case of persistent left superior vena cava. And we underwent uh, bubble contrast echocardiography, which was positive for persistent left superior vena cava. We went ahead uh, to do CT venogram, which was done from the right anticubital vein. It showed absent right superior vena cava and drainage into the right atrium through persistent left superior vena cava uh, through the dilated coronary sinus, as in the picture here. So uh, the, what is the embryogenesis of uh, superior vena cava? Superior vena cava is usually formed by the uh, right anterior cardinal vein along with the right common cardinal vein, this part. And the, the picture V is normal development of superior vena cava, where the proximal part of left anterior cardinal vein and some part of the common cardinal vein regress to form ligament of Marshall. Whereas if this fails to regress, as in the picture C, there is persistence of left superior vena cava, which drains into the coronary sinus and then into the right atrium. In most of the cases, the right superior vena cava persists, like in normal patients, whereas in rarely, very rarely, it is absent as well. So persistent left superior vena cava, though is the most common variant of the uh, thoracic venous system anomaly, its prevalence is only 0.3 to 0.5 percent in those without congenital heart disease. It increases by 10 times if there is a presence of congenital heart disease. 90 percent of the cases with persistent left superior vena cava, they have a right superior vena cava as well. Whereas persistent left superior vena cava with absent right, su uh, right superior vena cava is extremely rare as in our case. These are the anatomic types when there is a presence of persistent left superior vena cava. Picture A is the normal development of superior vena cava on the right side. Picture B, there is double uh, vena cava, that is right-sided superior vena cava, as well as left-sided vena cava, but no connection in between. Picture C is the uh, connection uh, via the innominate vein in between the two vena cava. And picture C is the pers uh, persistent left superior vena cava without any right-sided superior vena cava. And this was our case as well. There could be complications if there, is, uh, patients, uh, if there are patients of persistent left superior vena cava, like difficulty in CVP line insertion, pulmonary artery catheterization, de device implantation. There could be arrhythmias, like in our case. There could be cerebral abscess when persistent left superior vena cava drains into the left atrium. So our take-home message is persistent left superior vena cava is not very common. It's very uncommon, whereas persistent left superior vena cava is ap uh, with absent RV RSVC is even uh, rarer and CT venography is not usually done to demonstrate persistent left superior vena cava and it is not commonly done. Thank you.